worked with Andre the Giant a lot from the mid '70s and on. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you meet him in Japan? Where did you meet Andre? Yes, I met him in Japan. And this was when I was still in L.A. working for uh, Olympic Wrestling out there in Los Angeles. I got on the airplane. They booked me in 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 Japan. It was for six weeks. Wow! But I met Andre. They I was. It was a big 747. It was empty. And I was in the back, and the stewardess came back. So there's a couple of gentlemen up in first class in the upper deck because there's an old 747. Had two decks in the front. They they want you to come up there and and see them. So I went up there, and it was Arnold, Arnold Scullin and Andre the Giant. And then uh, I had a great time. They were playing cribbage, and I was drinking cognac. And I don't even remember going through customs. I was plastered on cognac. They practically had to carry me out the airplane. But uh, I had a great time. Andre was there for three weeks, so I got to hang out with him. Skolin, uh, he went back sooner, but me and Andre would hit the Korean barbecues together, and uh, we'd ha we had a great time. And a uh, funny story, one time we couldn't get a taxi because he was so big, and so I told him to hide around the corner. I weighed the fat taxi down, and then the guy sees, and Andre sneaks around, and the guy sees Andre coming out, and he gets back in his cab and starts to take off, and Andre grabs the bumper and lifts it, and the wheels are spinning like that. It was like something out of a Avenger movie or something. Wow. And the guy got out of the cab and took off running, the cab driver. We eventually got a bus <laughs> to get us back, or a big panel truck or something like that. Holy shit, I mean... You uh, and you didn't just hang out with them on that tour. You also you were tag team partners with them on several occasions. You yeah, were... and uh, I got you know being he was working for New York and so was I. And Vince took over his bookings from Frank Valwa, the Canadian guy that had his contract. So Vince took up took over all of his stuff, and uh, he still went other places like NW and stuff. But uh, I remember this for really like when me and Flair were world champions in the early 80s in in the mid-Atlantic in the Carolinas they would have Wahoo McDaniel and Andre the Giant go against Flair and myself so Flair would always have to go in there and to get the Giant slam because he took bumps all the time so they wanted me to come in and do the same thing and I tried but it threw my sacroiliac out all the fucking time. I couldn't walk, and uh, but we made it through. <laughs> that was a lot of matches against Andre and whoever. It was either Wahoo. I mean, you know, Wahoo was bad enough to wrestle. <laughs> and you have Andre too, and you and you didn't just wrestle him in tags. You had solo matches with him too. Yeah, yeah. Is he taking it easy? Is he I slaying? I only wrestled him one time by myself and tag team a lot of times but and in battle royals but only one time it was me against him single match and uh it was in elizabeth new jersey at a college there we always had a good crowd there too it's a nice building <clears throat> and i saw i was wrestling andre the giant i go you're kidding me and he's back there drinking bottles of wine and Arnold Scola, and they're playing cribbage again, and he's drinking Beaujolais. I had Mineta Beaujolais, he had about six of a six pack of big wines. And then he gets into the ring, and I, I go to the ring first, and so he gets into the ring, and he's like, he gets in, in the ring, and it kind of sets on the second rope there in the corner, and he goes, what's wrong with you, boss? And I go, Nothing, boss. So I went to hook him with him, and he grabbed me, and he kind of rolled me around, and he sat on top of me in the corner. You know, he's like, imagine yourself going out there, and you go, here's this big cow, but he's up on all, he's up on his second, uh, his second, his back, back legs, and he's just, you know, instead of all fours, he's standing there waiting. So how are you going to wrestle that? That's what Andre Giant was so He just grabbed it, moved me, set me down, and sat on me in a corner and let a big giant fart. And all the people laughed. It was probably 
Thank God it wasn't a runny fart, but it was one of those wine farts, you know, and go, mmm, smells like Merlot, or could be. <laughs> Beaujolais. Oh, so he, I says, just beat me. Please take it. But he, he, he messed around with me for a while, and then he beat me. <laughs> Great experience. But, you know, he got me back because in the Battle Royals, I used to sneak up behind him. There's like 20, 20, guy, 20 men Battle Royals, and I'd sneak up behind him, and I'd hit him real hard on, on his back, and he'd turn around. And so he got me back. We were the young kids. They were the seniors. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. They've been around for a while, but we saw John Leo, John, one of the greatest matches we saw in Montreal Forum was Don Leo, Jonathan, and Andre, and that, and, and Andre was only about 400 pounds then, 420, and that, the curfew, the curfew match, we'd never seen guy, two big guys, Don Leo was about 6'10", was yeah. there, six, and that, there wasn't the guys like that, and he could do cartwheels, Strong and that, those two guys, what a match they had. What year is this around? Okay. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was when the Giant first came over, to, I have to tell 70s? you this, when, uh, yes, uh, when, when the Giant first, uh, many moons ago, <laughs> many moons ago. <laughs> many moons ago. It was when the Giant first came to Montreal and started there, and he was, um, he, believe it or not, he was tall and slim. Right, right. Still as strong as an ox, but he was slim, and the moves he could do was just amazing. We worked, amazing. We worked against the Giant in New Zealand. What was and, he like to work and, with? And we, three, right. three Absolutely two. fantastic. And, and and we were lucky because, as, as Luke said, we got to work with him even before he came to Montreal, so he, he, he liked us anyway. Right. So when we got there, he was great, and he loved Capontier and, and, uh, and the Giant would work against Luke and I a lot. And then that was when I was on the dog chain, and, and the Giant used to love to, he, he, you know, had that laugh, ha, 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 <laughs> and he'd get me and wrap me up in the corner with the chain, then they'd go to work on Luke or something, you know. Um, he did a series of matches with Andre the Giant, Ugh. and he was like coming to the end. And your memories of those? <laughs> Andre tried to kill me <laughs> in Madison Square Garden. My last match with New York in '87. Uh, Andre thought I was just a kid, you know. Worked on top for about nine months with Hogan, yeah, his tag team partner, me against Andre and DiBiase. Right. And then I guess Andre thought I was getting too cocky or whatever he thought. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I used to do that little thing where a guy go grab you, I roll up. Yeah. He'd go to grab me, I roll up. Well, he said one more time, and I went to roll up, and he stepped right on my head. Oh. <laughs> he picked me up, and he tried choking me out, and I was going, oh, God, don't go out, don't go out. Yeah. Madison Square Garden main event sold out. Yeah. You can't pass out. And he just beat me up, and, and you know, and he didn't hurt me, but, you know, he, he was laying him in. He just got so blowed up, beat me up. I said, look, boss, you <laughs> yeah. hurt me. You know, and I didn't want to hurt him or nothing like that. Because if I would have did that, I would have been a jerk, you know. So I just stuck it out. And then before he pinned me, he sat on me six times and then covered me. You know? <laughs> and then in, in Memphis, Nashville, Nashville Coliseum, you know, I'm in the match. And Andre, I hit him with a tackle. Boom. I hit him with another tackle. Boom. Mm -hmm. You know. He takes the big bump, boom, crowd goes nuts. He, he goes headbutt. I drop the big headbutt. One more. I drop another <laughs> headbutt. One more. As I'm in midair, Andre goes like this. Poof! <laughs> you know, so that was the end of that match. And and then I, I you know, it was I got to make it, you know, to talk to Andre in Mexico before he died. Oh yeah. Cool story, Mexico, man. Check this out. Yeah. It's me, Coquina versus uh me. Coquina, Bad News Allen, Dos yeah. Mascaras, Cornette, and Andre the Giant. Okay. Andre the Giant's drinking. Huh. He's a big drinker, big time. I mean, oh, really? drinking 100 bottles of beer, he wouldn't even see it in his hand. <laughs> He's drinking Clamato juice and Mascal tequila oh. all day. He gets in the ring, so they, they're, doing, they're doing something where Allen Ooh. apparently took a bump. Andre grabs the ropes to do his sit. Yeah. And as he sits on top of Bad News, Alan Coas, he shits. <laughs> <laughs> All over. <him. laughs> Diarrhea. Oh, Tequila, Clamato juice, Hershey squirts, running down. <laughs> oh, man. Running down his neck, and now Alan's like this. <laughs> Get the fuck off of me. And his smell was so bad. I was like, <laughs> Oh, it's just hilarious, right? Oh, that's great. And every time he went to get up, he shit more. <laughs> you know, because I was like, oh, yeah. God. 
every <laughs> time he moved, it was like, woof, woof. <laughs> oh, it was the nastiest, grossest, funniest <laughs> thing ever. Oh, seen. God. Great story. I made up with Andre. I confronted him, asked him why. And, you know, he says, well, you know, I'm sorry and all that. And we became decent friends. And, you know, I'm sorry to see him pass away because, like I said, I'm, I'm, I don't wish nothing bad on anybody. Right. And in this business, whatever you could get from the promoters, whether you're like Shawn Michaels, a big jerk, <laughs> but whatever you could get, God bless you, because the boys need it, and, and the promoters make enough money. So Andre was all right. Man. The first time I met him, it was funny. Uh, he came over because he was a big drawer in Japan, big drawer. Actually, the first tour that I was on, I wasn't actually on the tour. I worked with Sakaguchi, and then they took me on tour with them to show me what was going on. And he was on the tour, and he was just a big card. So after a couple of years, they they had me in a match with him in the tag. And I looked up at him and I'm going, man, is this guy big? You know? <laughs> I just couldn't believe how big he was. But he was, uh, before he became injured and he started having problems and everything, he was one hell of a worker for a big guy. He set the standard for the Giants, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's still a Giant today that could do what he did. What happened on the bus between uh, you and Andre? There was an incident or something? Well, yeah, yeah, I was on the bus and Dusty Rhodes was on there and uh, actually Hulk Hogan was sitting behind me. And I used to sit two seats from the front, and he was in the back there. And I don't know if he's talking to Dusty. I think Chavo Sr. was on there, too. And he started making these racist remarks, and he started throwing the N-word around and everything. And I'm, like, half asleep, and I'm, uh, I'm, I can't believe what I'm hearing. You know? What? So then I said, um, I said, Hogan, uh, not Hogan, excuse me. I said, Giant, Andre. Yeah, yeah, what is it? I said, you cut, uh, watch your mouth. I said, I don't like what you're saying. I said, that's an insult to me, you know. And so he didn't say nothing. And then he, uh, as the bus was going, he says, oh, bad news. I said, yeah. He says, uh, go fuck yourself. So I told the bus driver, pull over. Huh. He said, pull over. I said, you come on out this bus and you tell me that to my face. So he wouldn't get out the bus. And Stan Hansen was there too. And then we got off the bus to the hotel and Stan was trying to, because he knew I was just really just pissed off, right? And he says, Alan, hey, he's drunk. Don't worry about it. I said, I don't want to hear that. And I went up to my room. And I didn't sleep all night because it really bothered me, you know. So the next day, I came down early. And we were going to the next town. And I was waiting by the elevator. And as he got off the elevator, I said, Andre, I want to talk to you. And he goes, what is it? I said, let's go outside. And he didn't want to go. I said, no, let's step outside. If I wanted to do something to you, I'd have jumped you as soon as you got off the elevator. Let's go outside right now. And I told him, I said, look, I don't appreciate the way you were talking on the bus. I said, you never hear me insult your people. He said, well, you know, I'm Polish and people. And I said, you don't hear that from me. So if you feel that way, that's your business. I don't have to listen to that nonsense, you know. I said, don't let me ever hear you say that again. So he apologized. And for quite a while there, it was tension between us. We, knew, we never would speak. We were always on different tours, and, uh, the same tour and everything. But we never spoke. But before he passed away, we buried the hatchet and, you know, we sat down and we talked about it. No, Hogan was uh, over on the tour, I believe it was like in the early 80s, probably yeah. 1980 actually. And you teamed with uh, Hulk on a yeah. lot of occasions. What was yeah. that like? And uh, yeah, it was, it was good. You know, Hulk was, he was quite the character. Uh, I used to like to rib him a lot, you know. Huh. And uh, he, he was something else. So, so uh, uh, let me go back on a story about Hulk. That incident with the Giant, uh, he was actually sitting in the row behind me. And when I told the bus driver to pull over, and I actually had my earrings in, and I took them out and put them in my bag. Now, I didn't know this later. Hope told me this a couple of days later. He says, Alan, I'd like to tell you something. And I said, what is that? He says, um, you know, when I saw you reach out in your bag, he said, I ducked up under the chairs. And I, what are you talking about? He says, well, he says, I never seen nobody talk to, uh, to Andre like this. I figured this guy's got a gun. <laughs> he's going to come out. He's going to turn around. He's going to shoot him, look over, see me. And then he's going to shoot me, too. I said, why did I do that? He said, I don't know. Man, you were mad. You were going to shoot everybody, you know? <laughs> and he told me that. I just busted out laughing. I said, you kidding? He said, I swear, man. He says, I thought you were going to pull a gun out and shoot the guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Were you involved in a match? I could be wrong. It was like Bigelow and Andre in Mexico when Andre had too many tequilas. And I remember that. Were you? What happened there? <laughs> True story. You're talking about the one where he shit on yeah, me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is actually, this is the last time I saw Andre alive because he was supposed to come back. We're, actually, we were both supposed to come back, uh, go home, come back a month later. And then he went to his father's funeral and he passed away. But what he had diarrhea and uh, plus he was drinking too. 
So he gets into the ring there, and yeah, Bam Bam was uh, was my partner, and he shoots me across the ring, and he says, oh, big ass boss, he don't just call anybody boss, right? And he gives it to me, and all of a sudden everything went, you know, I'm like laying in the corner, and he just let go, and it's all over me, and I, oh. I, I fell out the ring, and I'm, I'm like, I'm about to puke, you know, and, and uh, so I left. We're in the bull ring in Mexico, and I went up the stairs, and like you go up the stairs and there are people lined uh, along the line there and they're cursing me and everything and they're going like, wow, what is that smell, you know? Yeah. And it was me and I went in and I didn't take off my boots or nothing. I went in and just jumped in the shower, everything on it. Just, uh -huh. And, you know, I felt sorry for the guy. I mean, he was just sick. That's yeah. all. I just let it go, you know. But that's a true story. Everybody uh -huh. asks me that. I thought, oh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> we would look at the chart, see who we're working with. We'd get ready to go. We'd, boom, we'd, we'd have fun. All right. We went, in, we went into the ring with the idea that we're going to have the best match we can possibly have. I remember some of the times going out with Andre at night. Oh, Jesus. What were they like? <laughs> Andre, as everybody knows, Andre liked to drink. And Andre was very gracious. He never let us pay. And it, it, it upset us because I'm not a sponge. Barry's not a sponge. If we're going to have a couple drinks, you can buy a couple drinks. He'll buy a couple of them. But Andre gravitated to the guys they liked. They either liked you or didn't like you. Right. And I'm not a big drinker. And Barry's not a big You know, I can have four or five beers. At that time, we were just talking last night. We got into a mode where every night, but you're sweating and working out. We're drinking five, six beers every night. And then you go home and you get five or six beers. And my, and my wife would say, do you drink like that all the time? <laughs> no. <laughs> and then I start thinking, you know, we do. Uh, but Andre, five or six beers is just the appetizer. Huh. And uh, of course, he'd be out there all night. I mean, it was it was pleasant being around him. But. Remember, remember when we took him out for his birthday in Paris, France? Yeah. We took him to the... The, he, the wine he drank was Beaujolais wine. That was his favorite. And we were in Paris, France. And we rented a van. And Bill and I took him to the Beaujolais winery. Boy, you remember he had mm. tears in his eyes. <laughs> Nobody ever did that. I'm, boy, we had a lot of wine. <laughs> you talked a little bit about working with Andre. Um, you teamed with him in the machines. What are your memories of uh, working with Andre when he was in the machine? Oh, it was fun. Uh, that all came out as... Uh, I'll tell you the story where it developed. We were going back and forth uh, to Japan. I was there about 14 weeks a year. And we had just finished a tour and the next tour we're coming back was two weeks later. Well, we went back and we, we met at the uh, Kiyo Plaza Hotel. That's where all the guys from New Japan stayed. <clears throat> and Andre called me up to the hotel room and he says, we've got a situation here. They had a big team, a popular team that they were pushing called the Machines. Right. Their manager had stayed and two, two team members jumped to Bubba's group. And they didn't know what to do. Uh, so Andre suggested that well, everybody knows Superstar and everybody knows me. We'll be Super Machine and Giant Machine. We have the manager. And the manager would go on every day and he'd challenge the other team. They're chickens. They ran away. I have a newer, stronger version, a bigger team. And uh, it was fun. He liked it. I mean... Uh, Did you come over then have little machine and medium machine? Oh, we had machines. We had... <laughs> We had small machines. We had uh, then we got Mulligan, and he was the he was the big machine. All right, and it was it was supposed to be a lark. Everybody was supposed to know who we were. I thought everybody knew who we were, and I I think that they did. But I I get requests sometimes on the email to explain this. Well, why did you do that? It's a lark. It was supposed to be fun. I mean, right. you can't tell Andre. Then we had the Hulk machine, the the Piper machine. It was a gimmick. Right, right. That, that, that was supposed to last four to six weeks. People don't remember that Andre was filming The Princess Bride at that time. So he left, that's why we brought in the big machine. So it was fun. Who was your favorite guys to work with? Favorite okay. guys to work with? Bulldogs yeah. were, as, as a tag? Yeah, as a tag. Oh yeah. I'll yeah. tell you, you know, I, I really liked working against Haku and oh, and yeah. Andre. Yeah. I mean, there were two really good friends of ours that, that we would go out with and we'd have beers with and in different styles, completely. In completely different styles. And not anybody could work with those two guys either. Yeah, right. And uh, 
they were they were just guys that you could trust, and, and it was fun in the ring with them. Yeah, Bulldogs I liked. Hard uh, Foundation, Hard Foundation, great. and Tito and Martel. Yeah, uh, it was, it was kind of hard. We, we had fun almost every night. Yeah, Andre was a boy. He he he's a, all by himself in the in a league. All by itself. And one I had wrestled him. I tell you, I don't know if this was my first match ever that I wrestled. Because I wrestled him about eight or nine times. But if this was if this was the first one, this happened in the first match. He backs me into the rope and he chops me. Gives me an open hand chop. But I don't feel it. So I was young and I was, if I, if you if you sold something that you didn't feel, didn't look good, then they would fire you. Okay, I didn't sell it. <laughs> I didn't sell it, brother. And the next time, he he rocked, it, backed me, pushed me in them ropes, and when he hit me, brother, it was like I'd been hit by a truck. And my, on, I walked around for two weeks with his hand on his hand print whelped up on my chest about that. And every time I would, I would, if he walked by me in, in the dressing room, I would, I would sit down or I would lay down or I would, if I, if I had room, I'd just take a flat, I'd just take a flat back, back bump because I did not want that big son of a gun hitting me again. Cause it, I thought he, I thought he came up, I thought he broke every rib in my, in my chest. But Andre, after, after that, and I, I think I, I come up, I made a comeback on, I done something, I made a comeback on, I backed him in the ropes and I, I chopped him as hard as I could chop him. It was like a, it was, you know, it, it wasn't, that wasn't nothing to him, you know, and he thought that was funny. And I, I tried to stand up to him. He could have, you know, he could have just took, <laughs> you would have been done, you know. And you're 6'4". I'm 6'4", 375 pounds in shape. Not, not out of shape, in shape, in shape. And boy, he, he after that, me and him, me and him, uh, and he, another thing that helped me out against Andre was he, Andre loved Lenny Denton, and Lenny he knew that Lenny Denton was my good friend, so that that helped me in that because in the Louisiana territory that we was just talking about, when Andre was there, he knew that Lenny Denton was with me because me and Linton split up, split a trailer, mm -hmm. split up. Put a room, and he knew that I knew where Lynn Denton was. Okay, if if I wasn't with him, so he would come to my trailer and get Lynn Denton. <laughs> One day, brother, he come at Lynn Denton. It was about three o'clock in the morning. Boom, 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 boom on my front door. I open the door now. There's a there's a porch, and then there's a floor. I mean, there's a porch, and then there's a ground. You know, step off in the ground, right? Mm -hmm. Just like you just come in out there. But Andre's on the ground. He ain't up on the porch knocking on my front door. I went, nah, what? I opened the door and I'm looking eyeball to eyeball with Andre the Giant. You know, I'm six foot four. I, I, you know, and I said, Andre, what are you doing at three o'clock in the morning out here? And I said, have you seen Lyndon and Boss? And I said, yeah, he's right in there. Boy, he come up them steps in that door. Brother, he grabbed the bottom of Lynn Denton's bed and he put it straight up in the air, just like this, and he flipped it in the air. The Lynn Denton hits the floor, and I mean, whoop! You hear him flop that floor, and that bed, all the bed, the post, the metals, everything, right down on top of Lynn Denton. And Lynn Denton's going, I, 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 I like it. And he looked, Oh, it's you, boss. <laughs> he said, yeah, boss. Now we go party. And uh, there we, we were back in the, right back out in the club. L the good thing about Louisiana, the bars don't close. That's why Andre liked it there so much. Because Andre, he drank constantly. He never, he never, ever, ever quit drinking. He drank from the time he got up to the time he went to bed. So if he could figure out a way, he'd just done it in his sleep. Matter of fact, I don't think he slept a lot. I don't think he slept a lot at all. But yeah, I me and Andre after after our first encounter in the ring, we become we become very beer going, beer drinking friends. Uh what's it like to drink with Andre the Giant? Brother, he get 
You know, we're drinking a regular mug, which, you know, a mug of beer is pretty good. He would take that mug and order pitchers, the pitchers of beer. He would take that, he would take the first two or three, he would take that mug and drop down inside that the, the pitcher of beer, and he would drink from the pitcher. That's the way he drank beer. Now, when he was in WWE, WWF, he he had on his contract, he had three three bottles of three liter wine. They come in, they come in uh, uh, um, uh, bamboo wrapping, and there would be three of them sitting in his dressing room, or where he was wanted to be, wherever he wanted to be. In in the, he had certain guys that he liked, and he had certain guys that he didn't like. Uh, uh, and you didn't want to be on that non like list and have to get in the ring with him because he would beat you. He would beat you to a pulp. Uh, big Big John Stud. Uh, I was uh, him and Bass trained together. I trained some, but I didn't. I didn't do the steroids and and uh, the 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 regiment workout. You know, every day I've got to be in the gym. If Andre don't like you, brother, that would you you don't you don't. He got in the ring one time with John Studd and realized I don't like this guy. And the next time it was at, I think Madison Square Gardens. Andre just started beating the living, you know what? And John, you can see the expression. I just seen the I just seen the match uh, when I was at Starcade. It was on it was on Andre's. Uh, Biography or something they they're showing out in the Carolinas anyway, mm -hmm. but he you you see the punch you see the the pound and the, you see John's meat uh, skin like rolling from being really hit you know, yes. and finally he just grabs he just he just grabs the thing he just grabs the 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 and hits his kids and leaves. He defeated Andre the Giant. Yeah, well, we had what well, was a tag match. We beat Dusty Rhodes, but it was a tag match, so we beat Dusty and Andre. Of course, I always go. I beat Dust. I beat Andre the Giant. Of course. <laughs> okay. If Andre was here right now, you go. What'd you say, boy? <laughs> but uh, we beat Dusty. But even doing that in Superdome was something amazing back then. You know, it made me was well, Super Destroyer. You know, uh, golly, Scott, I love Scott. He was a great guy. I hate to see him pass away. God bless him, you know. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, yeah, we had, he was a good partner, you know. But, um, yeah, me and Scott Irwin did that. And uh, it put our name on the map there when we did that, you know. A lot of people knew us then, you know, all over the world, you know. How'd that feel? Because you were still somewhat young. I mean, it's still early 80s. Yeah, yeah. I had a guy come up to me. He, he said, says, at the last show I just did, he goes, Hey, the grappler, I can't believe it. This guy here was in the main event of Supernova when he was 19. I went, no, I was 21. <laughs> but no, it felt great, it really did. I mean, like, I, looking back now, I go, I say 21, unbelievable to me, you know, but I mean, then it was like, that's where I was supposed to be, man. <laughs> you know, I'm, I need a bigger push than this. I'm like, you know, you're always pushing, but no, it was a good, it was a good thing, you know. Um, yeah, I always said, you know, and I've always said this, and and it was, it's strange, and I, I thank the good Lord for it. So sometimes I go, Whew, I don't know, but uh, some for some reason I had a knack for this. I could accidentally do good in wrestling, you know, or or it's like they say, um, there's a million football players out there that's better than the guys in the NFL, but they didn't get the break they did. You know, like I got lucky. There's a lot of guys that's probably way better than me that they go, hey, Lenny, that guy's got to hurt me, get in there. <laughs> and all of a sudden, then boom, I took off. I was just lucky like that in, in this profession, you know, in wrestling. And you had the talent to. And then luckily, and, and I honed and developed and tried to do best I could, and it just all worked together. Now, I thank God for my career. When I first started, I wanted to play pro baseball, you know, and I was pretty good at it. And, uh, but um, and so I had the love for baseball, and then but then once I got into wrestling, I didn't and and I, and I feel kind of bad about this. I didn't really love wrestling. I was just good at it. And I could make money at it, and so I did it, and it was easy for me to start. Well, it wasn't the start wasn't easy, but I uh, 
But then once you're at it and you do it for a while and you get in there and you really do it and you draw money and the way it's supposed to be done, you start respecting it. And I did, and I always will now. I always did after that. It's like it, it's 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 just like any other profession. You got to get in there and dig to be one of the best, and to make money at it, you got to be good and you got to work your ass off. You know. Andre the Giant had a reputation, at least. You know, some guys he would like, and, and he would yeah. he would work. Did he have any issue with you being a 21 year old kid? Did he did he like you off the bat? How was the relationship? You know, yeah, he did. He did. No, it's funny. Yeah, he knew right off the bat if you if you were good or not. He had a knack for that. He loved, he loved to mess with me. Like he would tell me, this is the truth, man. He'd go, you know, he would do this, not in a big show, but like in saying a, a, a spot show or something, he'd go, headlock. He'd tell me to get a headlock on him. I'm telling you the man's head, and I'm exaggerating, is this big. I can barely touch my fingers. Okay? And he, I, not, well, does it look like I got a hold on him? <laughs> so Andre had me around the waist, right? And, and he'd hold me around the waist, and he'd start going like this. I was on my <laughs> them big old hands, and it would be beat red. And he go, and he wouldn't, and I try to get loose. He wouldn't let me go. I'm supposed to have a hold on him. <laughs> he goes, "You're not going nowhere." He thought that was funny, and but but we always got along. Whenever he would come into a place, he would if he knew I was there. I want to ride with the uh, with the grappler. And he'd tell Bill Watts, whoever I ride. So they'd tell me you're driving on. I said, "Hey, I already knew I was, man. You get, I want to. We have a blast, right? Yeah. We had a good time." But I got him, well, one time, <laughs> only one time I see him get really mad at me. Okay, well, two times. <laughs> but you all love this. We were in, um, he had, I was, we were working, I was working in Louisiana Territory, and I was, this particular night, I'm in Jackson, Mississippi, right? Well, I'd been out with Murdoch a couple of nights before, and Dick Murdoch could drink some beer, okay? And we just got hammered, and I was hung over as hell. <laughs> and so I had to wrestle, and I'm a hurt man, but I got to go on with, I got Junkyard Dog in the semi, and then Andre's got somebody in the main event, and, uh, and he is just coming in. He's been some other territory. So he's flying in for two weeks, and so around the loop, right? And so I know I'm, he's gonna want me to drive him and all, but this particular night, I'm doing the best I can to avoid him. And so, and so I didn't want to drink that night. Which, and I, so I go out there, and in Jackson, Mississippi, that's a big arena, but they got like a roll-up door, you know, where they bring all the trucks through the back and all in a ring and all. Okay, well, they had it open because it was summer. And Aunt, so that Andre's on one side over there. And I'm over here getting warmed up for my match. And I'm waiting to go out to Junkyard to wrestle Junkyard Dog. And Andre comes out addressing me. He goes, boss man. If he liked you, he called you boss man. Okay, if he didn't, you don't want to know where he called you. Anyway, he says, boss man. He sees me. I look out. He says, hey, buddy, boss. He goes, he goes tonight. Me and you. I go, yeah. I go wrestle. I get in my car, <laughs> do shower, and I haul ass back to Baton Rouge. But I knew he knew, and the, he was riding with Robley. I forget, it's a couple of guys. I know they knew where I lived at, my apartment, right? That's where all the guys lived. So I, I, I called Black Bart. He lived, in a, he lived in a place across the river, you know, because he had a wife. He didn't want to be able to, it was with us wild idiots, right? Him and his wife lived in another area. And I, so I called, he, he had a spare bedroom, I knew. He's a good friend of mine. I said, Bart, can I crash here, brother, please? Andre's looking for me, man. He goes, come on, I don't care, partner. You know how he is, right? <laughs> so, so I come over there, and um, I'm not kidding you. I don't know who stooged me off, but Andre found me. And it, I was laying in the bed, and here's how he woke. He, he couldn't even get through the bedroom door. He grabbed the mattress like that. I'm dead asleep and flipped me upside down. And I'm in my underwear, right? And when I stood up, he chopped me back across the mattress. I said, let me get my pants. Hold on. And we went out drinking. And man, it, and of course, there, and across the river there, they got after hours clubs open all night. <laughs> he tortured me so bad. He kept making me drink. He kept making me drink. Man, you don't want to get him mad at you. <laughs> What's what's like an average? I mean, because you know you're a big guy already. So yeah. I know you probably throw back, especially in your heyday. I mean, what was it like drinking with Andre? Uh, man, it just you know you, if you if you'd ever been around him, he could like a regular Coors twelve ounce Coors Coors Light. He could hide it in his hand. You couldn't see it. He could close his head around it, and you couldn't see it. Okay. I mean, and he just shoot like it wasn't nothing. Um, I don't know how many he's 
<laughs> get drained. But I know he just never stopped. You know, and uh, oof, he's unbelievable. I remember going to Lake Charles. He's the only guy could, they would let do this. We were going to Lake Charles for a match, and he goes, boss man, stop the liquor store. I said, we're on the way to the show, dude. <clears throat> I said, Bill Watts, I get pissed off. He goes, not me. I do what I want. Went in, he got four bottles of wine, and he drank some. He drank them before we, his match. <laughs> wow. Before his match. He wasn't even buzzed. He wasn't even. Unbelievable. You know, he, one time he did this. And this is one thing, like, people don't, they don't realize this. But we were, me, it was me and him, just me and him riding together this one particular week because we're, we was, he was in all these little shows. There were like, you know, um, small towns that, and, and everybody comes out because when are you gonna get to see Andre the Giant come to this town as the population, you know, 1,500 people. So everybody from the surrounding area, I mean, the high school was so packed, you couldn't hardly get in there where we went, right? So this is like the fourth one. And you know, we've been going for like a week and all these little towns, everything closes at, mid at 10. There's no bars, there's nothing. So we go back to the motel. I'm so bored. I want to get back to Shreveport somewhere where I can chase women. <laughs> you know, like be a regular wrestler, you know? <laughs> and so Andre, so this is the last night and we do it and, and we're about 80 miles or 100 miles from Shreveport. And I go, all right, man, we can finally get back in the car. We're going, Andre's match is over. Here we go. And I said, boss, man, we'll stop by Cowboys and we get in town. He goes, no way. I said, what? I said, dude. You seen the women over? Oh my God. And they knew all us wrestlers. We drank for almost free. It was just a blast. And he goes, no way. Because I'm thinking, I go in with Andre, dude. I'm gonna have women everywhere. He goes, I can't do that. I said, why? He goes, now here I am arguing with a giant. Like, <laughs> I drank way too much that night, right? And so he goes, I said, hey man, come on. So I'm getting mad. Come on, I want to go in there. We've been on the road for a damn week. I ain't seen done nothing. He goes, boss man, I can't do that. He goes, um, he said, I go in there like, like Elvis Presley, you can't, you can't drink. There's many people have all over you. I said, oh, horse shit. I said, I'll tell you what, we'll go and I'll do this. I know all the bouncers and I did. I said, I have them circle the table and keep everybody back. The only ones we'll let in is the girls we won't talk to. You know, I said, we'll have a hell of a night. He goes, finally, he goes, I'm nuts. So finally, he got mad. He goes, okay, I'll show you. I Go, I'll, I'll show you. We go, I went in, so I stayed in the car, man. I, I went and talked to you guys. Hey, hell yeah, bring him in, man. They're all excited. I take him in there. We cannot. Even with them, they're going through their legs. They, I didn't, we drank, we didn't even get how beer finished. I said, let's get the hell out of here. We can't even talk to each other. You know, people just, it was crazy. And so, I mean, but then, you know, I, one time, just like this, I don't mean to keep harping on Andre, but I, I want people to understand. The, look, the crazy things, like you go to the Shreveport, right, in Shreveport, the hotel, he stayed at, at the Sheridan. I couldn't afford the Sheridan. I stayed over at Alamo Plaza, but so I dropped him off, and they put two king-size beds together, okay? I remember one time I'm leaving, I drop him off, and I'm starting to back out to go over to Alamo Plaza, and he goes, boss man, boss man, stop, stop. I said, what? Come back, I can't come back, I get out. What's wrong? He said, I need you to call for me. I said, call for you? What are you talking about? He goes, come here. And you know, back then we, we didn't have cell phones. We had rotary phones. <laughs> you had to use your finger. He didn't have a pen or nothing. His finger won't fit. And I got to call Japan because I need a big contract. I said, what's the number? <laughs> There's a giant. <laughs> nothing fits, man. <laughs> I, I can imagine just driving a car, going to the bathroom. Everything, driving. everything. You, go, you can imagine him flying to Japan. He must have went oh, 25 times a year. Fit in that bathroom. I can't fit in it. I know I'm a fat ass, but I'm not like Andre the Giant. Okay, that poor guy. Yeah. Whoo. Just to wrap up on Andre, do you remember the last time that you saw him? Oh gosh, let's see. The last time I saw Andre, I'm trying to think. Guys, it's been so long ago, brother. It's hard to remember when I see it. Uh, I'm trying to think what matches I would have been at to see him. No, I don't even really remember. I actually, it was Louisiana, then, and then uh, Charlotte. I was in every territory just about I was with him, but um, he never made – see, when I when I in the – well, I think it was 86 or so, I went up to Portland, Oregon. And when I went up there, I stayed up there and worked for Don Owens. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd go, fly back and do other shots, 
but I didn't stay on the circuit full time like I was for the 15 years before. And so Andre never came through there for Don. So now I guess it's probably back in 86 or something before, 85, maybe in Texas. The last time I've seen him, yeah. Some of your memories of matches, uh, I guess you came up with Harley Race and you worked Andre the Giant and uh, Dick Murdoch at the Superdome. Yeah, that was one of my huh. first big time, I guess, big time, you know, teaming up matches. Uh, I was nervous wreck. I mean, here I am, a little kid from South Carolina, teaming up with world champion Harley Race. You got Andre the Giant. You know what I'm saying? So, basically, uh, I don't remember much about the match. What I, the only thing I can remember, basically, about the match is that they pulled this little joke on me in the ring. And huh. they, they knew, you know, from the guys in the territory knew I don't drink. I'm a non-drinker. Always have been. I don't care much for it. But, anyway... They knew that, and Murdoch, he goes out there, he, at the time, the Captain Redneck thing, he carries that backpack thing, you know, he used to carry an army helmet and always have something in the backpack, so him and Andre, they discussing his little plan, you know, so we're working and working and working, and finally Andre hooks me, you know, he does the old hook behind, you know, and marches me over to Dick Murdoch, and Murdoch turns his back to me, I can't see what he's doing, He's and he's reaching in his little backpack, I'm thinking he might be getting a shovel or Something like that, and he's over there. You see his body moving, but I can't see what he's doing. And Andre, he's laughing, you know. So when he spins around, I'm expecting to punch or a shovel or something. He's got a can of beer, and he pops the top, you know, and shoves it in my mouth. I'm like, I'm so shocked, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it's just spewing all down my throat and all, all over me, you know. And they're like, it's the funniest thing in the world. And these guys, right. I'm, I'm choking to death huh. on beer in the, in the Superdome in front of all these people. And, Andre's laughing his ass off. He thinks it's the funniest thing in the world. Now, how did Andre treat you? Because uh, some guys say he didn't like to work with other big guys for fear of exposing his size. Was he pretty good with you? I, I never had any trouble with Andre either. To be, you know, I know this sounds redundant, but it's the truth. But uh, I, when I was in Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling and, and they brought Andre the Giant in to face me, you know, you know, and the first night we worked, you know, I'm like, this is Andre Giant, so I'm flying. We'd met, of course, like I said, from Mid-South. He knew me. But I'm flying and taking all these bumps and everything. So, and so after the match, he takes me to the side, and, he, you know, he goes, boss, I'm out there for you, you know, like that. He says, I'm out there to make you look good. I come here, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm, I'm totally – I thought it was the – you know. I, right. I thought it was the other way. I'm the heel. You're Andre the Giant. No, I'm out there to make you look good, you know, and then – Years later in WWF, you know, we'd sit around and talk some and different things, you know, so. Respecting him. Exactly. I, you know, I respected him, you know, and you know, I guess he showed me the same respect back because I never, I never put down the business. I never, you know, I, I never did, did anything to disrespect anybody. You know what I'm saying? I tried to always be a nice guy and, and I love the business. That was, you know, I didn't need drinks. I didn't need the drugs or anything. That was my high was the business, you know, just be able to go out to that ring night after night after night after night and entertain the people and feel good that I had a good match, you know, that these ticket buyers were, I hope that, you know, they thought they got their money worth from the one-man gang, you know. Now, Andre the Giant, he was around this time, and uh, you actually teamed with Andre uh, yeah. a couple times yeah. at this period. How physically shot was Andre around this time? It was uh, it was pretty bad. He was uh, physically wise. He's you know barely can make it to the ring at times. You know, so basically if we was in tag matches or whatever, we try to pull most of the match and just you know basically get Andre in for a couple little this or that. But health wise, you can see you know he just wasn't there anymore. Knees and whatever, his whole body was just going to pot basically. You know, but he was still Andre the Giant. You know what I'm saying? And to me, he was anyway, no matter what anybody else saw. To me, he was Andre the Giant. That's like, man, oh man. His life had been wrestling his whole life. He had to, he'd already, he already had that huge ranch and all that. He could go home anytime and live comfortably. I believe he enjoyed the, being around the boys and going to the dressing room and play cards all night. And, you know, he was the only one allowed to drink in the dressing room. He'd have his vat of wine, you know, drink all night and play cards with the boys and just have, you know, have a good time in the dress room. I believe he, he just enjoyed doing that. Wasn't the money. Andre, uh, it was just crazy, man. Number one, for that just shows you how glorious, how, how, how glorious the fan is. That uh, they actually had hope that I could beat him. You know, I mean, my God, that, that guy's so big and so strong and uh, such a monster, man. There was no way in hell I could beat him. But uh, he was such a 
a professional that he uh, he went out there and, and did the job the way it was supposed to be done, man. He, he went out there and worked hard. Uh, he gave the people hope. He gave me hope, too, that I wouldn't die. And we kept right on going, man. And uh, it was damn sure a magical moment for me because, uh, honestly, nobody belonged in the ring with Andre the Giant. Topeka, Kansas for Geigel. First time I ever wrestled him. Eye opening. We went, we locked up in the ring. I put a front face lock on him. I didn't help him a bit. He picked me right up over his head, walked me over, set me on the turnbuckle, and patted me on the cheek. Hmm. And I sat there a minute. And I said, well, Holy cripe. Nobody has ever picked me up. And I didn't help him. Right. The power of him was unbelievable, his strength. And I thought, Wow. But Andre, gentleman, through and through. Uh, always, never a bad word for anybody. Never ever gave me a potato. You know, Andre was great. Good guy outside the ring. Totally, yeah, totally. You walk in the dressing room, it was always, hi boss. He'd be sitting in the corner playing cards with Skolan. Yep, that's you awesome. knew right where he, Andre'd be, playing cards with Skolan in the corner. <laughs> yeah, we got along good with Andre. Did everybody? Did people walk on tippy toes around him? Oh yeah. yeah. If Andre didn't like you, man, he'd just slam you in the middle of the ring and sit on you and fart in your face. Right. He what, would do that to guys. Really? Oh yeah. What are you gonna do? In you got a five hundred pound ass in your face. You can't move it. In the documentary, they talk about if anybody who didn't belong in the locker room ever meandered back there, he would he would make oh. sure they would leave. Oh yeah, he'd scare him to death, to kick him out. Right. Andre could move in his day. Yeah. I mean, he was fast for a big guy. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to imagine, imagine what it was like to be seven foot four. The great story everybody likes to hear is when him and they made me go pick up, I was still in college, they made me go pick up Andre the Giant for a battle roll. And I had to look at him going, dude, he's seven foot four, 500 pounds. I have a formula Trans Am. How am I going to put him in the car? He says, you got T-tops? I said, yeah. He says, take one off. I go, what? <laughs> so I, the first time I ever met the Giant, I go pick him up at Amarillo Airport. And I have to take the T-top off my car, and he's riding by. Look like the movie Gator with Burt Reynolds, that guy coming off. We're going down the highway. <laughs> you know, and that night, the both of them came back in my formula. Mulligan and the Giant. I was stuck in the back. <laughs> then, car. In my whole car. And that's the night that we all got drunk, and there Andre calls everybody boss. But Andre decided he wants me to drink Two Fingers Tequila. Well, this Mexican kid, drink tequila, drink tequila. I said, okay, I brought out a shot glass, but he brought out a glass. And he's filling up the glass, making sure I drank the whole glass. About three glasses later, I was on my butt on the floor. And, <laughs> and him and Mulligan are playing cribbage. In the old days, the guys were so simple. They go to the dressing room. They didn't talk about their match. They played cribbage. That was done in the dress. They played for points. Guy loses ten dollar, twelve dollar, whatever. That's what they did. I never heard anybody. Okay, here's the finish. That was it. And they go back to playing cribbage. Well, that was that night. Whatever happened in cribbage? Mulligan reached across my table and punched Andre in the face. Bam! And I'm laying on the ground. And go, oh no! <laughs> and big giant. You know how big that man is. Okay. I don't know if you ever got a chance to meet him, but he just laughed. Oh, oh okay, boss, we fight now. Bam! And Mulligan shot off like you see in the movies where shotgun, <laughs> jeez. These guys went at it, tore up my apartment, tore it up. Andre the Giant was an unbelievable guy. Um, I actually met Andre even before I started my professional career. I was still in college up at West Texas State, which is now West Texas A&M, up in the panhandle of Texas. Um, a lot of history there for pro wrestling. The, the Funk family, Dory Funk Sr., Dory Funk Jr., Terry Funk, uh, who I've known most of my life and have had influence in my life. But uh, I actually met Andre when I was still playing football and uh, up in Amarillo, Texas, and went out with him one evening. And that started a relationship. And then when my career with the WWE took off, that connection, that rub with Andre is what really helped elevate my my personality. The whole thing about buying the world title and Andre's going to beat Hogan and sell me the belt. And then we went all over the country and had uh, tag matches with Hulk and a number one, a number of uh, of other people for almost a year. So I I had a chance to travel exclusively with Andre and uh, just a, a, a super guy, absolutely uh, an unbelievable guy. Are some of the uh, legends true about some of the outside activities, like at the bar? 
Oh my amazing. gosh, yeah. I mean, Andre, I mean, you know, he's 7'4", 450 pounds, and, you know, if he wrapped his hand around a, a, a beer can, it just it disappeared. I mean, it was, you know, and, and yes, you know, he, he could put it away, and, and, uh, and at that time, uh, I could say that he probably put me to bed several times. <laughs> it was flaring myself against Andre the Giant and Wahoo McDaniel in Raleigh, North Carolina, Dorton Arena, cement, no pads around the ring, cement on the floor. So Andre, so I think back then, you know, we, we used to baby oil up a little bit, so we'd, ha we'd shine out there. I tried, after this, I didn't use baby oil anymore. And, and I guess, so anyway, Andre put me in a giant swing. That's where you, you grab one of my legs, one of my feet, one of my arms, one of my hands, and you swing me around. And because of the baby oil, I guess, or Andre lost me, and I went out over the top rope, but like a cat, I landed not on my feet, but I landed on my back. But I was knocked out. And I remember waking up and Flair's like, Pate brushing me on the face trying to wake me up, but he's laughing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and I wake up and I go, oh. And he, he helps me up and I just leaned on the apron and he went in and finished the match and I, I'm sure we lost. Andre gave him the big leg and a boot or whatever. And they went back and Rick went back and now I'm, I'm out there standing on my own and I can't move. I'm like paralyzed. I think I'm paralyzed. And Virgil, I remember <laughs> Virgil came out because I was always close to Virgil. Virgil came out and helped me get back to the ring. But the next day, you know, being young, young, young and dumb, and I won't say the other part, but full of energy. <laughs> uh, I was okay, and the next morning I was okay. I thought I was paralyzed, but because I landed flat. So, wow, that was an experience. And the other time he farted on me, so that was good. No more of that giant swing. Yeah, you'd almost rather take the fart than... Oh, yeah, sure. definitely. <laughs> TitleMatchNetwork.com